guys, I think this has happened before, but I'm doing it again. I have a product that doesn't have RGB lighting. I mean, what am I doing here? I don't know how long you guys are going to keep putting up with me like this. Okay, quick closer look at these guys and we can pretty quickly see that there's a not, lot, not a lot going on here. It's a very simplistic design. Of course, we've got a nice aluminum heat spreader here. We have just some tiny accents of some yellow and we have some tiny accents of some camouflage. And of course, that is courtesy of partnering with Asus Tough Branding so it'll match well with the Tough Branding motherboards. And so once we get to the flip side here, we kind of got the same situation going on. Just, you know, got a little bit of some stickers here for some, um, just, you know, you got your timings, you got some codes and stuff. But overall, it's just a very, very minimalistic design. And personally, I think Ballistics made an excellent choice here. The Tough Branding from Asus, while they do have some RGB lighting and, and a little bit of flair, it tends to be a pretty straightforward design. Therefore, I feel like what Ballistics is doing is matching up well for what those kind of builders are gonna want. I wouldn't know for sure, but it's just my guess. Now, performance. That's the other thing that these guys are going to matter a lot on. If we're gonna be matching up with Asus, then we're gonna want top tiered performance, and these guys performed great. So, of course, my real curiosity was, hey, how well are these going to measure up compared to the Tactical Tracer RGB? Because if you've seen that review, I really liked it, and these guys performed excellent. A to 64, we had excellent performance numbers for the timings and speeds. Overclocking, again, I almost got 1,000 megahertz. In fact, the reason why I didn't quite get 1,000 megahertz this time is I switched to a new board, and I have an X470 motherboard instead of an X370. Um, it did hamper my ability to get to higher frequencies, but my overclocked numbers, even though I don't show that since they weren't the same test bench, my actual overclocked numbers on the performance were a little better, even though the frequency was a little lower. So it tells me that the X470 motherboard that I got from Gigabyte is doing a little better on stabilizing the frequencies, which is definitely a good thing. Um, yeah, A to 64 did good. Um, of course, then I took a look at Cinebench just to see, and, and once again, we see very little difference. Memory has very little to almost none impact on the rendering benchmark. I checked out a gaming with Far Cry 5 and Crossfire even, and even with that extra bit of GPU load and, and anti-aliasing and all that fun stuff, very little improvement on the performance. But I did find my memory benchmark that showcases what extra memory or extra speed does, and that was WinRare. Um, file compression and um, extracting, the extra memory or extra speeds really showed some nice improvements. I mean, we were showing close to 20% improvement with overclocking on WinRare benchmark. That was pretty impressive. The only complaint that I really have on a performance level is, is Ballistics did not include a temperature monitor in this kit. I threw up mod, checked it, didn't, should, didn't have it, went to HW Info, no temperature sensors. I was a little bummed about that because I really like the temperature sensors because if my temperatures are low enough, then I'll keep pushing voltages and push higher frequencies. But because I didn't have a temperature sensor, I maxed out at 1.4 volts and didn't go any higher and saw where my overclock would go from there. Getting a max overclock of 30, over 3,500 megahertz with that kind of voltage though was phenomenal. And what was also impressive is even with the full four sticks, I still came just a notch below that in the frequency at over 3,400 megahertz. Excellent overclocking. Excellent performance numbers. Let's go ahead and look at some pricing and wrap this baby up. There is a slight problem with the Ballistic Sport AT memory kit, and it's kind of the same problem we ran into last time with the Tactical Tracer RGB. It's expensive. I mean, for this 32 gig um, kit right now, you're looking at almost $360 on Newegg. Now, RAM has gotten pricey and it's starting to slowly come back down, but it's still staying pretty high up there. 
But even compared to other kits that are closer to $300, this is a little bit up there. And you can look at cast latencies, you can look at timings, you can look at voltage, and you know they're not standing out in any particular way. Um, and, and that's kind of the only knock against that, because otherwise we are looking at a phenomenally performing product. I mean, once again, they knocked the overclocking out of the park, so it's not a one-time fluke deal. The Tactical Tracer RGB overclocked, well, this stuff overclocked phenomenally. Um, can't be more impressed with that. But the biggest thing is though if you want rgb lighting and temperature monitoring you can actually get the tactical tracer for ten dollars less than this kit right now so i feel like while price might hold it back a little bit that's just kind of a ballistics thing that's happening and because they overclock so well that might be the reason for the higher price i'd have to do more comparison with other kits to know for sure I do really love these kits though. I could definitely recommend that if you want something that doesn't have RGB, you like the looks and you're like, hey, I want some overclocking or I just want really high quality, go for a kit of ballistics. I think you're going to be pleased. All right, guys. Well, I hope you like this review. Um, I'm going to actually go ahead and do my quick, easy overclocking guide. So I will add that over to the end of this video. I'll have a card, have a kind of an end screen thing going for you guys. You can check that out. I will catch you later.